Oh yeah, look at that. Super familiar, yet super new. The ever popular Hoka Torrent is back in its third iteration. And I'm happy to report that the shoe keeps so much of what worked in the previous version while updating the slightest bits for an improved race ready trail crusher in a lightweight package. The Torrent 3's ProFly midsole feels light and responsive underfoot, and the improved outsole lugs provide just enough additional grip where wet rocks and logs feel less like ice rinks. The upper is built similarly, though a bit thinner in material, and FYI, it still feels a little claustrophobic on really hot days. In the end, does the Torrent 3 improve or change enough to warrant snagging? Can you get a decent, comfortable, lightweight, race-ready trail shoe for $130 from Hoka? We're gonna find out in today's review. Let's dive in. What is up everybody, Ethan Newberry, the Ginger Runner here for another Ginger Runner review. Today we're talking about this right here as I whip my eyes out uh, from Hoka. It is the Torrent 3. Pretty excited about this one. Spicy little number. Of course, before we dive in, a couple of things. Subscribe to the channel, join the GR crew, and this shoe was provided for review by Running Warehouse. I'm under no obligation to say anything positive or negative about this shoe. I'm not financially compensated in any way for anything that I say in this review. All opinions are my own. No one has to approve the review before you see it. So congratulations, you get to see it for the first time. Pat yourself on the parts that need patent. And let's dive in. I like to talk about the things I like and dislike about everything I review, starting as always with the things I like about the Hoka Torrent 3. Grip. So what's kind of cool about this shoe and, and carries over from version one and two uh, is the lugs. They've got big lugs and they cannot lie. These are a bit redesigned, I think, as far as the rubber is concerned. So you do get additional grip, just like stickiness out of the rubber, which I appreciate because uh, I don't think that the previous versions necessarily had that sticky rubber or that Vibram rubber that Hoka's used in other shoes that does really provide that grip you need. Their new recipe works well giving them the accolades for the grip here. Nice job. Weight, or lightweight. Uh, in my size, size 11, the Hoka Torrent 3s are about 10 ounces, which is a pretty dang light package that gives you a lot of grip and race readiness, snappiness, and a little bit of cushion and responsiveness uh, in a really nice package. So way to save some weight, way to trim it down. Good job. The same Z's. This is something that I've commended other shoes for doing, and in this case, it's no different carrying over the good parts of previous versions while adapting some of the things that need a bit of attention and uh, just making some smart decisions here. A Little bit of additional rubber grip on those outsole lugs, a bit of a reduction in the materials in the upper, though still hot and I think they can work on that. It is a lighter shoe and I just appreciate some of the little details. It's not a lot different. If you run into the Hoka Torrent, Torrent 2, you're gonna feel right at home in the 3. Uh, they're just doing the right things screwing those little knobs just enough to make it a tighter version of the previous version. But it's not all Detroit style pizza and crack and playoff games. There are a couple of things that I dislike, but the Torrent 3, let's get to those now. Narrow. So this is something that carries over from the previous version as well. Uh, one of the negative things. I don't think that these shoes are gonna be any more accommodating than any other Hoka. I don't think they're necessarily a wider shoe or a shoe that does anything but keep things narrow. And I wish that was not necessarily the case. Responsive. I do think because this shoe tends to sit on a bit more reduced platform compared to other trail shoes like the Speed Goat, which has more cushioning, or the Mafate, uh, it's a bit more responsive ride. Though flexible, you're gonna feel a lot of the impact on the ground, you're gonna feel a lot of the sharp rocks, the roots, things like that. Uh, there's just not a lot of forgiveness in that cushioning because there's not a lot of it. So if you are leaning towards a more responsive shoe, this is gonna get you that type of experience underfoot, which in my case is a bit of a dislike. But that is it for dislike. So let's get a bit more specific in our breakdown where we talk about build quality, comfort, fit, price, and look, starting as always with build quality. I think they're carrying over some of the same build quality elements from the previous version. I think it's gonna hold up better than many anticipate. Uh, that midsole isn't gonna flatten out early just because it is more responsive. The upper is holding up really well to me. Uh, the lugs are great, so that redesigned rubber is great, good, nice. Comfort. It's not the most comfortable Hoka, obviously. It's not designed necessarily to be that max cushion trail shoe. I think it's designed to be more of a race ready uh, trail shoe or a trainer that they market as being able to go the ultra distance, but it wouldn't be my ultra grab. This would be something that I'd run like a half marathon on trail in anything longer than that. And I might want just a little bit more underfoot for that extra comfort. Fit, it's narrow. It's not gonna fit all foot types quite as comfortably as you'd hope. Uh, for me, it works fine. I definitely feel 
the pinch along that midfoot, but uh, overall, I'm not necessarily having a problem with the fit, but some people might. Price, 130 bucks. Lower end of the spectrum as far as Hoka's are concerned now. I think uh, that's a fine price point for this particular shoe. I don't call it an entry level race ready shoe. I think that's a pretty good price point for something that I would consider a elevated expert level trail race ready shoe. It's for everybody at $130. It's kind of in that affordable realm. And finally, looks. You know, it's fine. I think it's a bit dated. I think this is a very similar look to their previous version. There are better color versions than this, but I don't know. It just feels a little dated with this sort of like zebra slash thing. It's just my opinion. Bringing us to our conclusion. The Torrent 3 feels so familiar. Those who've run and enjoyed the previous versions will feel right at home in the third version. And in fact, you might like it a lot more than the second version because you'll notice those little details. Thinner mesh more stick. Uh, there's just a lot of little fun things that they've done to make this a better experience. While I might prefer a bit more cushioning underfoot, I think at $130, you have yourself a shoe that will work for both training runs and races, depending on the distance, and will fit right in with any of those other shoes that work on fire roads or single track, especially drier conditions. Uh, it just, I don't know, it's fun. Which brings me to my ultimate conclusion. Is this a buy, try, or a why? I'm honestly gonna say that the Hoka Torrent 3 is a buy at 130 bucks. That's a pretty good trail shoe to snag that gets you pretty good grip, decent lugs, decent fit. <sighs> yeah, I might snag them. That's a pretty good price to pay. And that's pretty much it. Table now turns to you. Have you run in the previous versions of the Torrent? Are you interested in the Torrent 3? Of course, if you have any additional questions or you want to get a pair for yourself, links in the description will take you over to Running Warehouse. They are affiliate links that cost you nothing, but they do help the channel out. So consider using those for any of your running gear. If you're looking to get something like nutrition or shorts or socks or whatever. Uh, and that honestly is it for today's review. Subscribe, GR Crew, all that good stuff. We hope you're getting out there and training hard, racing harder, and partying the hardest. I know I am. I'll see you guys next week for more fun. Bye-bye. Danger.